Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Amen. Amen. All right, go ahead and open your Bibles to the uh, fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. We're going to be starting and laying the foundation on growing up spiritually. Glory to God. Uh, children, out of here. That's right. Sorry. Let the, let the little guys head out. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to work on making sure we can get this. We, we need to get this. Uh, the kids start closing this on Sunday morning. So we have a nursery for you guys so you guys have a place to uh, have them. Amen. If they need to be. If they need to be. Uh, that's not, that's just, we're just saying we can work on that. Hallelujah. Which we're, we're, we're working out all the little kinks. Little kinks. Uh, anytime you're in, back, in a situation where you are, where we're in kind of like a mobile or transient situation, uh, we're kind of setting up and breaking down. You've got to work out all the little stuff. And that takes time. And, uh, you know, so it's, well, it's, been, you know, it's been two months. No, no, no. We started over here in February. So it's been a month and a half. And uh, a lot of things we've worked out. Uh, we've gotten the portable sound system. We started out with just guitars with no sound system. Um, There's just a lot of things we've gotten worked out. We've got me off uh, the lapel mic and the headset mic. is one and down to one mic. Hallelujah. Uh, amen. And uh, I didn't realize how much I didn't like the pell mics until I had to put one back on. Now, it was, I hated this mic when I first got it because it was, you know, I didn't like it over my ear and touching my face. Now, I love this, don't like the other. So, hallelujah, it's what you get, you get acclimated to, okay? Hallelujah, praise the Lord. All right, we're going to talk about growing up spiritually. And I say growing up spiritually. You know, God doesn't want you to stay a baby. Now, we do know there's a lot of Christians sitting in a lot of churches that are really like 15, 16, or even 25 or 30 years old, and they're sitting there in diapers with a milk bottle, spiritually speaking. Come on now. Throwing fits and having, you know, baby conditions and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's time to grow up. We need to grow up. So the purpose of the church is to win the lost, but then to train the believer. Bring them up in the Lord, the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and cause them to be an effective uh, member of the body of Christ going out and getting others. It is not so you can stay like you were. Now, one of the things, some of these mantras that people come across with, the narratives that people come across with is, you know, you don't, you know God, you, God's going to do this for you, and God's going to do that for you, no matter what you do. The, the problem with that is, they're not teaching people they need to grow up. They need to mature in Christ. They need to become a believer who's, who's giving out instead of always taking in. They will always be receiving in. You know, as you get older, you still you, you, you eat really good stuff. Now, my kids just went to Disney, and I found out the next time I go to Disney, it's going to be like they did. They did the meal plan. You order from the left side of the menu when you're on the meal plan. Because if it's set right, you go in there, no matter where you go, you go in there and you got table service, and it doesn't matter what the right side said, you get it for that table service. Mm-hmm. First night, they were eating lobster tail. Nathan said, I can get anything I want. He never looked at the price again. Because it didn't matter. The price was, the price was, it was meaningless. Yeah. Hallelujah. We like that in the body of Christ. You know, we like to give out all the good stuff of God, don't we? We want, we want the good things. All right. Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 11, it says, He gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and pastors, and teachers. Uh, I left that word some in front And some pastors and teachers. For the perfection. Now, we're perfecting in the Greek, better translated maturing. Okay? You know, for the perfecting of the saints, what? For the work of the ministry. We need to mature the saints so they can do the work of that. That's how the structure is in the Greek. That's it bears that out. That it is for the maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry. Okay? Hallelujah. Um, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a mature or perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more what? Children. Tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the sight of men. Let me say something. Everybody just says you can't judge anybody, you shouldn't ever say anything about anybody, somebody's teaching you shit. No, listen. The Bible proves there. There are people who work in the sight of men with cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Are you here? There are people out there trying to deceive the body of Christ. And the people run around going, well, you can't do it, you couldn't do it, you just said, well, it's all walking away. Now, I'm walking away because it's my job as a pastor to watch over the flock to make sure that there's somebody's not coming in with cunning craftiness and deceiving and taking them astray and leading them into a place that's going to be damaging and, and harmful to them. Amen. 
You just can't, you can't walk around and go, I love everybody. I don't care what they say. There are people out there who will blow your head off in the natural. There are people in the spirit who will do the same thing. Because all they want out of you is the money. All right. That would have a real big. But speaking the truth in love, make, you know, what, what, what do you mean speaking the truth in love? Love is the driving force behind sharing the truth. Love is the motivator. Love is the undergirding reason why truth has to be shared. Because you love people. You don't want them deceived. You don't want them shipwrecked. You don't want them going astray. You don't want them getting caught up in stuff that's really damaging to them and to their families and to other people they have contact with. Okay? There are a lot of people who influence a lot of other people because a lot of other people to go down the tubes because they can't get it straight. And they, get, they all point the finger at the minister or the pastor and want to blame him for why they got problems. It's not his fault you got problems. Hello? Did you say, I'm not sure? <laughs> lean, lean up this a little bit. <laughs> Speaking the truth and love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, that is Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So here we have Paul writing to the church talking about the reasons ministry gifts are given. But in that, there are certain statements. They one, don't be children. And, and look, look, did you see he says, be no more children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine? See, children get thrown all over the place. That's why it's so important to, to, to have people mature and grow up in Christ. Why? So they can judge properly things. I have seen people go out and get caught up in stuff that you think, you thought, how in the world with the stuff we taught, they know better. With the things we share from the Word of God, they know better. But see, children, don't, children just do, do, are moved by flesh, moved by opinion, and moved by all kinds of stuff. You're sitting there going, are you stinking kidding me? You know, they're, 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 people get on social media. You find out a whole lot about people from social media now. Hello? I wonder if the kids posted something to somebody that went to Raymond now and now in a Unitarian church. Born again! Stand still! Little Dan Hagen there. Yeah! Tongue talking. Bible toting. What's wrong with the Unitarians? They don't believe God. They, you, you determine what God is just at 13. If He's the dirt, you worship the dirt. If He's a cloud, you worship the cloud. I mean, that's, that's what they're, they're, they're teaching is at 13. You determine what God is and that's who you worship or what you worship. And there's no hell. Poor Jesus didn't know about that. Hallelujah. When God called up and all that, and had been healed supernaturally by the power of God. See? You, you can be children and toss to and fro with all kinds of stuff, by spite of being cunning crap and whatever, I wait to see you. If we're not careful, we get caught up in that kind of stuff. All right. So, there are, there are three stages of spiritual growth. They are babyhood, childhood, and adulthood. Okay? And the, understand, <coughs> once, you, once you reach adulthood, there are progressions through adulthood. That's a progression through each stage. Okay? Um, first Peter 2 2. Talking about babyhood stage. He says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. Listen, babes don't need the sermon deep call upon the deep. Hello? You know, you don't need you to be preaching or teaching or feeding them stuff that's so deep they can't get it. Some of us other people can't get some of those sermons. They're so deep, they're too deep. Are you here? I mean, y'all, you're, you're, you're so deep, you're still in a well. You know, there's an Old Testament scripture that says, deep call from the deep. you got people trying to be the deepest theologians and everything they can be, so they impress everybody with their articulation of the theological, eschatological, and ecclesiastical, and exegesis of the scripture. Yeah. And when they all get done, they're all going, whoa, that was deep. What do you say? Babes need the milk. I said, babes need milk. You, you know, you've got that little little fellow back here. You can't shove a steak down his throat. I don't care if you put him in the blender, he's not ready for it. His body's not. He needs milk. Now, the problem is, is when you're done at the age and all you want is milk. Now, I like milk now, but I went with some Hershey's or some Nesquik uh, in that bad boy. 
Amen. With some double stuffed Oreos. That makes you stop. Stop right there, you got it. Somebody said, I didn't need to stop. Now, babes, babes need milk. Hallelujah. Um, one of the characteristics of babyhood is innocence. Now, let me say something. This is a characteristic as a Christian we should never lose, but the saddest thing most people do. Okay? You know, they become wise to the ways of the world. Now, we need to be innocent as lambs. I mean, why, you know, why is a serpent that innocent as what? Does? Is that what? Does? Okay. We, we need to maintain our innocence about us. Yeah, we have to be wise. But, you know, people hurt us. People do stuff to us. You know, I, 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 get, I get so tired of hearing how many people have left such a hurt. When most of the time is they wouldn't deal with their mess. When the pastor preached something that required them to deal with their mess, they got mad and got hurt and left. Okay? You know, I, I know too many people. I've seen it happen too many times. Oh, he hurt me. They did this. They did that. All we got to do is help you grow up. Because we know from our side that you're going to be tossed to and fro and carried out by everyone in the doctor. If you don't. All right. But innocence is something we shouldn't lose. Um, when you're born again, you're innocent and leave before God. It, it, it is a characteristic we should never really outgrow. Let me say something. You don't ever need to come to the point. See, this is where we need to start losing our innocence. We think we know everything. I know it all. You know? I remember when I first got saved, I used to run in my Pentecostal church. I had a strong concordance. I had an amplified Bible. And I had the Rumley Bible. Ms. Rumley used to sell these Bibles that were the ASV parallel. Well, actually, it wasn't parallel. It was ingrained in all the scriptures. But all these studies. It was a, it was a horse. Style. It took a year. My world will see out 124 Sports Five, and I put those three books on the, on the dash that covered the whole dash. There's the Strong, the Amp, and the Rumley Bible. Because I, I still got the Rumley Bible. You know, I, I thought I used it at Raymond. When I went to Raymond, I had that Bible and used it there. And, uh, you know, and, uh, you know we, we, uh, but you get the way you know it all. How long have you been saved? Six weeks, and I got it. I'm telling you, there's just don't nobody know anything but me. Yeah. No. You've got to remain innocent. Hallelujah. Second characteristic of childhood is they're ignorant. A, a baby here. You know, if you've got a baby crawling around in the house and there's, there's old food, old bread, it don't matter what it is, where's it going? In the mouth. Why? Because they're ignorant. They don't know any better than that molded piece of whatever that the dog licked and all this kind of stuff will hurt them and cause them problems. Now, it's going in the mouth. So then you safety lock the entire house. The cabinets have got latches on them. The handles have got the little things that won't turn. You know, you got all kinds of stuff out there. Why? Because they're ignorant. Babies are ignorant. They don't know any better. Okay? And you've got a lot of Christians in the same way. They don't know any better. Hello? See, this is where the innocent part is, 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 is a, it's going to be a problem if it's not guided correctly. Because somebody comes along and says, I'm a Christian. But we believe in um, reaching people through sex. So we have swinger parties, and we exchange keys, and we go home and have sex with them, and then lead them to the Lord. Because what's the highest form of expression than to be sexually intimate with somebody? Now, you think I am joking. This was a news story uh, that I read about three months ago, and the couple was being interviewed about it. And they were just talking about how they had led people to the Lord. You know, they, you know the husband, it was a husband and wife ministry. They were ministering to other people. Now listen, if I bring that up to my wife, you want you know, somebody else to be preaching next Sunday, because there won't be nobody here like me. Matter of fact, you might be having our uh, Pastor Ed Wake and appreciation and remembrance service. You know, there might too. You would be. How did he die? Tomahawk to the head. Cherokee came out of the white. Hebrews 5.14 says, Strong meat belongs to them who are fully, who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, the world calls discerning now judgment. If you discern good and evil, they call you judgmental. But the Bible says that when you take the Word of God, and by use the Word of God, you come to the place you can discern what is good and what is evil. That's not judgmental. That's just sense. Biblical sense, which is the children are ignorant. They go, "Ah, oh, we need his love." They, 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 they think they're going to try out for the hippie commercial from the seventies. 
put a little flower thing in their hair. Girls wear maxi dresses, and the guys got long hair, you know, and beards, and they all look like a bunch of bums, you know. And I, I, was, I, was, I was in the seventies. I remember. Okay, and they all stand around there with a little peace symbol out there, going, "What the world needs now, love, sweet love." And then we get to sing the love song. They say, "I like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony." And get a Coca-Cola out. Get me a glass of Coca-Cola, Coke, other than the Coca-Cola. All right. Now, see, it's, it, it, see, people when they 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 pull up a little thing like love, and they don't take the whole word of God, so they're ignorant. And the Word of God wants us to be wise. doesn't want us to be ignorant. Amen? They want, so, uh, ignorance is one thing. Babies don't know any better than to swallow anything. We talked about that. That's bad teaching and doctrine. You can go to a church. Now, they may sense on the inside of their spirit something's not right about it, but they don't know cognitively. And you, then, then older Christians come along and try to teach them to go against their spirit. Come on. Well, they got to know they've been around, they've been serving God 20 years longer than me. And they're saying, no, you can't judge, brother. you got to off him up. His heart's right. Not if he's trying to destroy the body of Christ. I mean, how stupid can we get sometimes? We're smarter about going into a restaurant than we are a church. You go into a restaurant and the food tastes bad, you don't go back. Or if you give them a second chance and it's still bad, you just don't ever go back. But we'll go to church and swallow anything they got. Hello? See, children are ignorant. Or babies are ignorant. And let me tell you something else. They're irritable. If they don't get their way, if they don't get what they want, if it ain't right on their time, you know, listen, 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 let me tell you something. When they are truly babe, this is okay. It's our job to help them. When you've been saved 15 years and you're still like this, get out of the diaper. Put the milk bottle down and get out of the nursery. Come on now. You know, uh, Brother, Brother Hagen, she tells her about the, the, women, the woman in the church, the old woman in the church, who, um, you know, she, if, if he didn't come see her uh, on her schedule like she thought he should, she'd just lay out of church for a while. And he'd come visit, and then she'd come back to church. He finally figured out what was going on. And so he, he wouldn't go see her again. And finally, somebody asked, said, well, you know, why, why won't you go see her again? He said, I'm not going to go see her. She's just a baby in the nursery. She's just throwing a fit. I'm not going over there. And she came back to church. She just wanted to have the pastor come by her house and visit her. To have it on the little dangling leaf. He had, he had true babies he needed to minister to. He had true babies he needed to go share with and help them overcome and grow. She should have been going helping them grow up instead of him having to do it all himself. Because she wants him to come over there and visit her. You know? See, now look, when the true babes, this is okay. Again, sir, if you just got born again and you're still a baby, Lord, that's all okay. We're going to help you grow out of that. You can stay 15 years and you're still there. It ain't okay. I said, it's not okay. Now, what would you think if, if uh, uh, Nate became this woman with diapers on? Or in a stroller. They roll him in a stroller with his diapers on his milk bottle. You look at us and go, something's wrong when you get that boy out of them doctors and get him out of that store. <laughs> Y'all just feed off of each other out there. No, babies are easily spoiled. And because of that uh, irritability, and they get that way when they don't get their way. And I've, had, I've dealt with people in church and they don't get their way, boy. I don't go, don't go, leave. I'm taking my, my bat, my ball, and I'm going home. And what they're really saying, I'm taking my tithe and my offering, and I'm going somewhere else. Okay? Or they don't go somewhere else. But someone goes somewhere else for after a while, and, you know, and then they play the same game over there. You know? Listen, we, we need to grow up. Okay? And if you recognize yourself in this, you're older than the Lord, you recognize it. Change. you got to be weaned. Now, how many of most parents, most moms particularly, are happy when the baby's weaned? Guess who ain't happy? The baby. That baby was... You know, I remember you take food to the kids after they're being while you wean them and try to bring food up to them. My mom wants them, they just... Ain't taking that bottle. 
Ain't taking them strange peas and carrots. Ain't taking nothing. Hello? I don't want to be weaned. Ah! And scream. And then the lot of parents will give in and, and go ahead and let the baby nurse. And look, it's not what they can do. But it's time to wean you. Hello? Now you got, you got crazy. Now you got people that are nursing the kids at six years old and that kind of stuff. I guess it's crazy. You know? Six year old runs just outside the nurse. Like some of the churches. There's, there, there's certain ages that are still coming in being nursed. Instead of getting off the, getting off the bottle, getting on something a little stronger. Amen. But they, they're irritable when they get weaned. Uh, hello? So get out of the diaper, get rid of the bottle, get rid of the, uh, out the bottle, and get to growing up. All right. Okay? Psalm 131 2 says, Surely I have behaved and quietened myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even weaned as of a child. Genesis 21 8, and the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast that same day, and Isaac was weaned. Now, babies that get weaned are taking the next step. It's important that as you grow in the Lord, you start out with the sincere milk of the Word, and you're growing in God. It's important that you step as you're weaned from being spoon fed all the time to taking the next step up. Okay? It's in the Bible, in the natural, it was a day of festivity and rejoicing. It should be spiritual too. Amen. Then when you can start eating some meat, when you, when, when, when you can get some, a, a little revelation that's beyond, I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm alive. I'm glad I'm going to heaven. Well, that's all about rejoicing back there. And it's time that it starts, it starts to grow. Amen? All right. Um, babies are usually frustrated and distracted and hurt. It don't take a whole lot. And listen, if you're always getting hurt in church, you're a baby. Now, I don't say that to condemn you. You need to recognize where you are. You've been saying 15 years, and every church you go to, you get hurt, you're a baby. And you need to take account of that and go to the Word and get somebody to show you from the Word how to get out of that. Because you'll never be productive in where you need to be in the kingdom if you're always getting hurt and every pastor hurts you and every Christian you've ever met. I've, I've listened to some people talking to you how long have you been saved? 25 years, and everybody hurts me. I was, well, okay, you're just a baby. That's harsh. No, it's a slap upside your head to wake up. Stop it. Stop it already. Stop blaming everybody else for why you are where you are. Stop blaming, you know, this one and that one. Stop projecting your past onto them as the one who, who insults you and hurts you and does all this stuff to you. You know, I'm not your, I'm not your psychologist. Amen. I said amen. You don't come to say they rate the church to get psychological therapy. You come to let the Word of God take root and restore your soul. There is stuff the Word of God can do in your soul that no therapist could ever do. Now, I'm not slapping every therapist out the door, but when, you, when you're living on that therapy and then you expect everybody to follow the therapist's rules to help you, it don't work. You're right, it doesn't work. Hello? You've got to get out of that. You've got to stop being so easily hurt and easily offended. As a matter of fact, the, the, the father uh, writer said that great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall by any means offend them. Now, what's that? That's the mature person. Because the Word of God will take over whatever somebody's offense would do to them, and the Word of God will supersede it and bring them out of it. Amen? Hallelujah. Okay, let's look over here now. Uh, from baby stage, we go into childhood stage. Let me see what time it is. Hallelujah. Oh, it's only 10 minutes to 11. Praise the Lord. Y'all think, that's it. Now, I, got, now, I don't even want to hear it. I don't even want to hear it. I was in Winston at 9 o'clock this morning. You were probably just rolling over for the third time. Come on now. I was preaching while you were snoring. Yeah. He's thinking about how she can get me under the bus again. Now remember Ephesians 4.14 says that we, henceforth, we, that we be henceforth no more children. Okay? Uh, Toss to and fro. Childhood stage comes after babyhood. Now, the babyhood stage is that we're weaning you from, you know, com- complete codependence on, on, on everything. And that's time to start taking some responsibility. Okay? Now, not complete responsibility. You've got, you know, you know it's, it's, it's all a part of the progressive steps. One of the things about childhood stage is they're unstable. Remember when the kids first started to walk? If they really didn't walk, they tumbled forward. 
You know, they start on when they finally get up, they can get up on their feet, and they start, and, and they had to find the couch or something to run into to stop them. All right? Because if they don't, if, if, if the path is too long, boom! Nose dive! They're just unsteady. And children are unsteady. Spiritual children are unsteady. You know, the Bible says, you know, the, the double minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Children are unstable, they're, un- they're unsteady. And so we need, you know, we help them through that process. We're, we're there to guide them. Don't get to where you can't see from the, from the, the pastor that God's placed in your life. Particularly when you don't like it. Now I remember when Shannon was, she was actually kind of, we used to her her the walk of this thing for her. You had to do something because she was, she was, now Jesse was sneaky into everything. Yeah, shocker. We came in one day from outside. We had been on the porch in the house, and Jesse was on the refrigerator. What was up there she wanted to get to, we still don't know, but she was on top of the ref- She got in a chair up to the counter, got on the counter, got to the counter up on top of the refrigerator. We're like, what are you doing? you just had to constrain to see that. So Shannon's in a little walking thing one day, and she walks over to a plant, you know, and, and, and uh, these are the of poisons for children. And we had several in the room. And, uh, you know, so Shannon kind of goes over there and she, she starts, and Danny goes, ah, ah. Now, that's a, that's something for no. Every parent uses it. I hear it all the time. Ah, ah. Use it on the dog. Use it on the children. I mean, just ah, ah. On your husband. That's right. I bet you don't get ah, ah. I bet you get, anyway, you get, let me see here. Yeah, there's a, there's a tire mark on your head. They, no, they just drive right over them with the bus. Drive over, back up, park it. All right. No, no, I love you. I just pick on you. All right. Was that a faith statement? Just don't need to answer that. So Danny goes, ah, Shannon looks at that plant, and she spins that little thing around in the room, and she looks at every plant in the room goes back to the one she's sitting in front of, looks at Jamie and goes, she did just go spanking. You spanked her, that you better believe. She knew exactly what she was doing. She knew exactly what she was doing. Hello? So you, 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 can't, you can't trust them to be you know, steady and do everything the right, right way. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, you can't rely on them to carry out tasks. They'll they'll uh, get in their room. You say, "Now I want you to get, I want you to get all the toys put in the toy box." You'll come back three hours later, and and, and, and three of the toys are in the toy box, and they're sitting there with one playing with it. Or take or take and get apart. I shared this morning in Winston. Jesse, remember those little lamps? You had the sleeve. You had the little bulb at the top and a little sleeve over it with a little bitty uh, lampshade on it to click onto the bulb. We just had some, a child one like that in her room, and we heard her scream one day. Now, we had taken that out of her room and put it in the closet. She got in the closet, got it out, plugged it in, slid the sleeve off, and hit the contact. <laughs> totally distracted, you know? And, and here, here, with, in, in church, if another opportunity comes along, they're gone. Totally gone, man. Totally gone. Like blue. Yeah, man, I'm gone. Blah, 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 blah. King Louis, Babu, Jungle Book. Huh? All right. They get, and so, you know, they come to you and say, Oh, we love faith in the church. We love faith in the church. Somebody invites them to come over to the church. Oh, I love such and such church. Yeah. And they're gone. Because they had, they had this that they like. They got to do this get distracted. Okay? They're curious. Jesse. They want to know who, what, when, where, what, huh, who, huh? They're walking in another conversation. Who, what, huh? Are you here? They just don't like not knowing what's going on with everybody. They want to get in on the gossip. Let me, call, let me call, tell you what it is. Country terms. It's just plain old nosiness. Amen? 
They're, they're unsteady. They're curious. They're talkative. I love my children. They make good some illustrations. Proverbs 10, 19 says, In the multitude of words that want us not sin, but he that refrains his lips is wise. Don't you use that at home. I'm just telling you. I, I, I'm, I'm pre-warning you. I'm talking to cats in case you're wondering. Ecclesiastes 5, 3. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. Now, babies in church are always running around sharing something, stirring up something. Now, they're not talking at home and share. <laughs> Cats can throw out of so many ball games. I have all kinds of calls on him. You know, I got basketball calls, I got baseball calls. Yeah! He struck out so many times when they were dating. I still do. <laughs> to the towers! <laughs> right at the dinner table, you know. Putting up with me for a problem all the You need grace. Anyway. <laughs> He's witnessed it. Overly talking to people are usually guilty of three things. One, evil speaking. When you got people in church, let me, let me say this. You know, some people are talking about things with God that just... Some people just run around running their mouth. And see, when children are just run, baby children, spiritual children just running their mouth, they'll get in trouble. And they cause trouble in the church. Hello? They take other people down with them. Well, yeah. a number of years ago. Right, let, me, let me show you three things. Here's what they're guilty of using evil speaking. Vain speaking and foolish speaking. Evil is talking about the faults of others. Vain is always talking about you. You know, foolish is just saying stupid stuff too much. Okay, we got a lot of Christians who do too much foolish speaking and jesting. It's, it's okay to have fun, but that being said, we need to use the parameters. There needs to be some guides on that. It doesn't need to cross from the place of just being fun to being foolish. Hello. Now. A number of years ago, let me show you how this works. Uh, in our church that we were in, that we came out of uh, back home, um, there was a couple in the... In the uh, actually, I, I was instrumental in leading her to the Lord. Okay? Um, now, in fact, um, Janie worked with a friend, with a co-worker, and a co-worker, this, was, this girl was her friend. And she was going through a really difficult time. She was living in sin and was thinking about committing suicide and all that kind of stuff. And they were having a company picnic, and that girl asked James, since her husband's a minister, where he talked to her. Well, I spent that whole afternoon sharing with her, talking to her about what's going on in life. And this is outside, outside with everybody. I'm not out in some room by myself with her, okay? We're outside. Jamie's around. Um, she's, not, she's not sitting on everything because I'm, I'm just I'm trying to minister to the girl. She got saved. Came to our church. Got filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, then... Her future husband didn't come to church, and uh, they ended up getting married. And they were friends of ours. They were close friends of ours. We spent all of our, because we didn't have, neither one of us had children at the time, we just spent all of our time together. You know? And, um, you know, we had a lot of good time together. We had a lot of good fun together. All right? But then, I'm telling you, see, children, babies, and then children, if you don't keep them on the right track, you get off. And uh, we had an assistant pastor at the church um, who got hired before I did. And eventually I got hired at church as a sister pastor. And um, he was preaching. And she got, after a few years, she said say things like, you know, I love Pastor So-and-so, the pastor. But I sure like to hear So-and-so preach. Now, I grew up on a short leash. I did. I said, wait just a second. You are way out of line. I said, he's the pastor. I said, so and so to give you all the zoos and the wham wham. They can give you all the whipped cream on top of your dessert. They can share all the fun stuff. The pastor has the responsibility to, to do things to train you and develop you and to lead you in the right places. And, uh, and, and besides that, that assistant's working out from under his covering and calling. She didn't listen to it. Well, eventually, uh, they, they, they got 
crazy homeschool. What do you mean by that? If you're not homeschooling your children, you're missing God, uh, you're out of the will of God, uh, you're not, you know, you're, you're, you're not following the plan of God. Uh, they, they're there at the church. The husband became the pastor of the home over the, the wife and the children. Well, then, you know, he ended up moving to another state. And in that other state, he was working for a college. It was a homeschool college. It was, it was the only homeschool to come to that college. And he was working there in a particular area. And then somewhere in there, wife started really getting, he, he got really off. And started having these online conversations with some guru at some time. Well, basically, she, had, she ended up in an, like an online affair. Got so far off, she cursed the blood of Jesus to tell the husband, I spit in the face of your God. She would mock the blood of Jesus. Now, you know, I read it. And I wept and I, and I, I, I thought, oh my God, she's going to hell. Right. He was 11, makes it, no, he, was 11. he was 6, makes it very clear. He's, he's, been, he's been born again, takes the, takes the good word of God, takes the powers of the world to come. Hello? If you... Um, no, it's, it's one of them. I'm, I know I know my folks well, and uh, I want to say something. So people, don't, people don't think it matters. People act like what you do doesn't matter. They act like it's not right to try to train people and bring them up in the Lord. Hebrews 6, Therefore, le- <clears throat> therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection, or maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God or of doctrine of baptism, laying on of hands of the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and made partakers of the Holy Ghost and tasted the good word of God and the power of the world to come. I don't think this person qualifies at every time. I was, we, we were with them as, in a relationship with friends for years. Papa Fat sat in meetings with, with but Buddy Harrison, he, um, um, uh, Lester Summerall, all kinds of, of you know, this, <coughs> just didn't even do anything but live on the Word. Flow in the gifts of the Spirit. Fill with the Holy Ghost. If they should fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God of flesh, and put Him to an open shame. Hello. Hello. There's no scripture talks about counting the blood of the covenant where they were sent about an unholy thing. This person wouldn't listen when it could have made a difference. They were children. Something came along that tickled their ears. They got, off, they got off just in the homeschooling arena, and eventually it led them. But they took themselves out from under a covering. They made themselves accountable to themselves. And in the end, absolute shipwreck. Demons are dead, I believe, at this point. Hello? Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus is the Son of God is Antichrist. It's the spirit of Antichrist. So why do people like me and other pastors take it such a heavy responsibility to teach them and not let you get away with stupid stuff? Listen, I don't. Do, I never discipline my children for having an accident. If they turn over the last note, they get this thing. Hello. If they if they fell and they were carrying something that fell and dropped and broke it, they didn't get a thing. But if I told them not to do it, and they did it, they got their back side wet. They did not like to see us go to the paint store. Those five-gallon paint stores were good rods. They were flat, so they really wouldn't damage you. But they, you could get some leverage on them. You could pow with them. I mean, they, 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 they sit out there in the car, and they probably figure, did I do something wrong? What is it I did wrong? If I, Mom and Daddy, I, I love you. I love you. I love you. You're in the paint store. You're coming, and you come out with four or five of them. 
I, I forgot which one it was, but I broke one of them on them. I had to take two of them together. Okay. When you start, I, I, I heard him, I did. When you start speaking evil or wrongly, you start speaking too much, you start saying things. And listen, when people say stupid stuff, you just can't sit around and listen to it. But I love them, I don't want to judge them. If you don't, you'll be going down the road with them. I said, you'll be going down the road with them, buying into all their stupidity. When you should be rebuking them and love. I mean, I must say rebuke you. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. You say, you know what? That's wrong. That's, that's the wrong position. You know? No. I've been serving the Lord long with you, and you're wrong. You know? You see, you, 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 you know, listen, you older Christians. Now, this is what I preach. Did y'all, anybody read my post this week? Or y'all just went by old pastor that had a post on his red eye? Okay? About the soul soul in the Word and how that, that third type of ground, the thorny ground, See, we let stuff get into our life, and if you don't deal with it, I think people I thought were good ground. I came to find out that when the cares of this world, the lust of other things, and the deceitfulness of riches, now the cares of the world can be all kinds of stuff. Came, and they've been serving God 25, 30 years. But when that came, the word got saved. Because they took offense. And usually because they were hanging around some babe or child that they should have been helping and instead let them influence you. Peer pressure is a horrible thing. We know that from, you know, and where's the peer pressure the worst in, in, in school? Kids do things in school out of peer pressure they would never do otherwise. They feel the pressure from other people to be cool, to be accepted, to be whatever, and they'll do stuff they would never, ever do otherwise. And you get people in the church, they say, what? They're children. They're children. They're children. They're children. They're children. They're children. And the reason I, was, I got off that whole thing is because that person used to say, I love Pastor so and so, but when anything is preface, but I love the pastor, and then something else is coming negative, you need to shut them up. You just need to shut up. And you need to tell them to shut up. I'm not going to listen to it. I'm not going to listen to it. If I need to talk to somebody, then you go talk to him. Hello? Yeah, well, we're constant. Go talk to the. But if Satan, Satan's cutting you off in the very place that you can get answers. Hello? Listen, I can't tell you over the years. Hey, well, a number of years ago, we had uh, a couple in the church, and they. Uh, they got upset with us. And uh, they left the church. Now, here's the thing. I had told them, I said, you need to cut off that relationship with that person like that. I said, They're, they are a dangerous relationship. And nobody's ever loved us that much. Nobody's ever cared for us that much. Nobody's ever taken the time to tell us something like that. Next day, they called back, we're leaving the church. So they went back to the person, person who was one of the strongest manipulators I've ever met. They had a spirit of I've never met anybody. I've never met anybody yet since then that had that kind of controlling uh, spirit on them like that person did. You know, just, it was just kind of, they called me up one day and they, they pushed all the buttons and rung all the bells and spun me up. And I was spun up. And then they go, I've lowered my voice. Do you know why I've lowered my voice? Because soft answer turns away wrath. I'm thinking, no, pal, if you were here, I would be bam bam you. Bam, 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 bam. I would pile drive you into the floor, you little skinny uh, garbage. And I was hot. Oh. Spin me up and then pull this to spiritual. I felt like Chief Inspector Dreyfus. When he heard you, what's those names? Pink Panthers. Okay. Oh, yeah. Find me up and then pull that. I turn, I'm turning away wrath. No, you're not. If I could get through the phone to you, I would. 
fellow, and I was younger then. I think it's going to happen today. You know, if you push enough of the buttons and pull enough of the levers, you're going to spin somebody up. I, I, I pastor our, uh, what we call our home function now in Oklahoma. I think it's getting spun up. Yeah. I won't, I won't even say anything like that. All right. Love you, Pastor. I guess he's getting spun up. Now, see, when you start speaking to them, you see, as children, we can't be able to, you can't be running around saying everything. Saying stuff that's not right. You can't be, the, you know, and Christians who are older need to stop those people. You do. Well, I tried to, you can't, it's not your job to minister to them, and it's not your job to tell them to shut up and go see the pastor. You're out of line. You're, you're getting yourself in a day. And I told that girl, I told her, whoa, you're out of line. I did. It was over 15 years later that the fruit of what she sowed back there took control of her life and brought her to destruction. God. And if she was listening, she would have been there. Hello? Hello? People leave, go to different churches, drunk half the time, and they're doing great. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You know? No. No, you're not. And who are you deceiving? You're deceiving yourself. Amen. We, we have to walk in light of the Word. And children, you can't be just running your mouth and us older Christians need to do something about stopping it. Now here's now look, look at I don't teach you or tell you something I don't I didn't practice. When we were in our church we came out of um pastor was out of town one week and uh, I preached. And after the Sunday morning service this lady in church came up to me. Yeah. We'll take you and your wife out to lunch. Well, I'm making five dollars and twenty five cents an hour. Yeah. We'll take you. We'll take you to three steers. There's Western Green. We used to call three steers, and um, it, it was it was a, it wasn't a high end. Look for Greenville at the time. It was high end. You know? No, it, it was better than Prince's. It's like you look up there and see Golden Corral, uh, best buffet in America. I'm thinking, you don't get out much. The commercial says best buffet in America. I'm thinking, you folks don't get out much. I've been to the better buffets. Because you get all you want, college kid. Yeah. So thirteen dollars, so he can get macaroni and cheese all he wants. So anyway, she takes us out to lunch. We get to the restaurant. She said we order the food. She said get whatever you want. I said, yeah, praise the Lord. I don't know. I will get something besides, you know. Little chicken tenderloins with some kind of Italian dressing on it at home that Jamie cooked. Because it was cheap and low fat. Is it that one? Yeah. <laughs> and food comes out, we're sitting there eating, and then she starts in on Pastor Seven. Mm-hmm. That's right. I could have at least waited until I got done. <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, let me just stop you right now. You, I, 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 I'm here serving him. And he's the pastor. And I'm not going to him listen to this. I'm just not going to do it. had a woman come to me one time. And so uh, he gets back in town, and I call him up. As soon as I knew he was in town, Pastor, got to talk to you. So and so came up to us, took us out to lunch after Sunday morning service, and he started in on this, but they told me exactly what she said. Uh, he didn't take them on to call her on the phone and get her in the, on the carpet and lose her pot. She thinks I just going to hurt the church. The lady came to me one day. I was on staff now. I was over one of the, and, and on the property we're on now. I got in one of the buildings and, and we were doing something. And she, she was there doing something. So she came and we ran into each other and she started talking to me. I love to hear you preach. And you were just annoying to God. Well, thank you. And if you, if you started church, I'd go. I looked at her. I said, let me tell you, if I ever start a church, it'll be so far away from here, you won't be able to come. I said, 
I'm not here. I will never hurt this church. I will not do damage to this church. End of that conversation real quick. You can get a lot of junk in the church and you'll just say, shut up. And children, listen, children, sometimes children just need to be told, shut up. You're out of line. What you're saying is not right. You don't need to be saying it. And you know when your kids are saying stuff they shouldn't say, um, you draw up on a short leash. Now, I don't do it anymore, but a few years ago, Nathan, I walked into the bonus room. Nathan's sitting on the couch. You remember that day, don't you? And I said something to him, and he popped off something at me. Then he shouldn't have popped off at me. I don't remember. All I remember was this thing. Was I had him up off the couch like this. I scared something out of him. Not sure what it was at the time. But I mean, it was like, What? You don't ever talk to me that way because you understand. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I'm telling you, boy, it didn't take long for that to happen. I sure hope that didn't make the microphone. Oh, Lord Jesus, help me here. What time we got here? Let me see where we are. It's only 11.15. Hallelujah. But no, he, 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 it's right, you don't do that. And babies in the church, you older Christians, you need to say, no, we're not going to listen to that. And you're out of line. You need to stop talking about that. It's going to cause you damage and harm in the long run. Now, here's what happens. People leave churches. And this kind of starts with this kind of stuff. They'll leave. And they get, they get, uh, either they get hurt <coughs> as a baby or as a, as a child. They get, they get to thinking stuff and get to share and stuff and get to talking too much and start sitting evil speaking or, or too much things speaking or fools talking out there. They get things out there in words. People start joining this stuff to them. Because they're really likable. They got a good personality or whatever. They're, they're, they're a charisma. That charisma. Well, somebody with charisma could take you to hell. Ask Jim Jones' class. People saw that man like he was Jesus walking on water. And they drank Kool-Aid to kill themselves because he told them to. Now, not all of them. Some of them finally figured out what was going to quit, but then they shot them. But that man, that man, people just followed him like he was the greatest thing in the world. He moved, left their homes, the family's trying to get him out. Sent senators and congressional people down there trying to figure out what's going on down there. And uh, they assassinated him. I don't remember. Maybe. His daughter was in there. He's trying to get her out. And they assassinated him. You know, just because they got charisma don't mean they're gods. Or they're called of God. And sometimes their charisma is not charisma. It's narcissism. Narcissism. They think they're God. You don't follow just because somebody's got a... You know that Jesus wasn't even really good looking. There is no beauty in him. Isaiah 53, 52, and then the 53. There's no beauty in him that we should desire him. He wasn't a good looking. He just, you know, he didn't go home and he's good looking. See, you go get your bus, Melanie, and park it on Jeff. He came all right to pictures. Jesus, take the wheel. Hallelujah. All right. And so in this, 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 this childhood stage, you got to watch what, how you talk. You can't be talking all this stuff. You older Christians need to talk, take the, these children and say, look, you got to stop this. And you need to understand, we're going to get the man who stays in the spiritual development over the next couple of weeks. You need to understand, when you're older in the Lord, you have a responsibility to help disciple and bring up. Which means you can't just be pal all the time. 
you got you got to be a nurturer. You got to be you know you got to be you got to be wise. You got to be the wisdom. Hello. I want to say one more thing on this. When people leave the church, you don't need to maintain a close relationship with them. Because Satan will use that to say, they're doing great. must have been Pastor Ed. And they'll say stuff about Pastor Ed. And the next thing you know, they got you thinking, oh, Pastor Ed, this or Pastor Ed, that, because they're over here and they're doing great. People call me. I know what's going on in your life. Hello. I know, I know pastors are coming. I know what's going on in people's life. I see them out in public. I see their Facebook posts. We're doing great. Drunk as a skunk. No, you're not doing great. Your marriage is down the toilet. You're not doing great. Your back's clear. You're not doing great. And then you're going to hang out with them. And the next thing you know, you're down there with them. Hello. Amen. All right. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.